This is John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. This was me about 10 years ago when I was 32 years old. I didn't really start my personal transformation until I was about 30. And most of the significant changes actually happened from 35 to 40. In this video, I'm gonna break down the most important things I did to completely transform my life and to go from a fat, lazy boy working for someone else to the financially free man I am today. Here are six key things I did to transform my life. By the time I reached my 30s, I was lazy and fat. I'd worked hard in high school to build a decent physique by going to the gym and lifting weights and running a few times a week, but by my mid to late 20s, I let most of that go and I was really out of shape. The pivotal moment for me came when I went to the store to buy some size 46 jeans because my size 44 pants didn't fit me anymore. I had to admit I had gotten fat. I made a vow that I was going to change around my entire life and I was gonna stop putting off getting into shape. I started running again with the plan of losing five pounds every two weeks and within a year, I went from over 300 pounds to 189 pounds. I started lifting again and built a decent physique but I could never get as lean as I wanted to until I discovered OMAD. Now, I discovered OMAD by accident when I was going on a trip to Hawaii for two months and I didn't want to gain weight but I wanted to be able to eat out at restaurants so I decided to skip breakfast and lunch every day. When I came back from the trip, I'd lost 15 pounds and all my lifts in the gym went up. I felt like I'd discovered the fountain of youth. So I decided to keep doing OMAD and it helped me build a lean physique while retaining my muscle without having to worry about dieting and counting calories. In fact, one additional benefit of OMAD is it helped me develop a great deal of mental toughness because it's difficult to train hard and go all day without eating. The other physical discipline I added was running long distance. I never saw myself as a long distance runner. In fact, I never thought I'd ever be able to run a marathon or even a half marathon. I just started out running three miles a day about three times a week, but then one day, I realized that it wasn't my body that was holding me back, it was my mind. I started running six and seven mile runs, and then at the end of a nine mile run one day, I realized if I can run nine miles, I can run 13.1. So I signed up for the San Diego Rock and Roll Half Marathon the day before the race and completed it. I worked my way up to marathon distance and ran my first marathon swearing that I'd never do it again. But fast forward it to today and I've run six full marathons and one 50 mile race. Now, did all that running and pushing myself to my physical limits cause me to lose some weight and burn some extra calories? Maybe, but that's not the point. Running that many miles and pushing myself to my physical limits helped me in other areas. The physical discipline developed my mental toughness and helped me in all other areas of my life. You learn a lot about yourself when you run 50 miles. In addition, pushing myself to my physical limits greatly improved my self-confidence. I felt good about myself because I was working hard. And when you feel good about yourself, you seek to improve yourself even more. Speaking of running, want to know what I did during those long, boring four to five hour runs? I read books. Well, technically I listened to them, but for all practical purposes, it's the same thing. Perhaps the most important thing I did to transform my life in my 30s was reading literally hundreds of books. Running for hours every week allowed me to finish a couple of books a week. I gradually would increase the speed of the audiobooks until I reached an average speed of 3x. And I know that might seem impossible, but now when I listen to books at 3x speeds, it just sounds normal to me. I'm planning a separate video where I go over the 100 best books of all time, but the most pivotal books for me were books that focused on personal development and philosophy, especially Stoic philosophy. I remember going for a run when I was in Hawaii and reading The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. I reread it three or four times immediately because it was so good. That book introduced me to Stoic philosophy, which had a huge impact on my life. Another pivotal book for me was Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. That book helped me overcome procrastination better than anything else I've ever encountered. I listened to the audiobook of Jesse Itzler's Living with a Seal on a 10 mile run at a time when I thought running a marathon was impossible for me. That book taught me 
that I was mentally weaker than I thought. And the very next day, I ran 26.2 miles because I knew I was capable of it. If you're interested in the complete list of the best 100 books when I create that video, make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. I am a huge procrastinator. When I was younger, I was diagnosed with ADHD and given Ritalin to help me focus. But as an adult, I've had to learn ways to become more productive and focus on my own. The first productivity system that seemed to work for me was one developed by David Allen called Getting Things Done. This system worked pretty well, but it didn't completely fix my problems of procrastination, so I sought to build my own. I combined a software development methodology known as Kanban with some of what I learned from Getting Things Done and a time management system called the Pomodoro Technique to create my own productivity system, which I still use to this day. I have a video on exactly exactly how the system works in the description below. One of the key parts of the system was using the Pomodoro technique to set aside focused blocks of work to focus on one task and only one task at a time. I also explicitly planned out my entire week and each day, so I always knew what I was gonna work on next. Once I fully implemented the system, I was able to get five to 10 times as much work done in a week. This allowed me to greatly grow my side business income and eventually quit my job. Speaking of quitting my job, let's talk about how I transformed my financial life. I started investing in real estate in my 20s, but I didn't really buy my big investments until my late 20s to early 30s. What really fueled my growth in my real estate investments and overall wealth was building and growing my business. Using my productivity system, I hustled hard to grow first Simple Programmer and then Bulldog Mindset. But even before that, I started out by making developer training courses for a company called Pluralsight. I created over 50 courses in a few years and was paid royalties on those courses for a long time afterward. I took the money I was making from my business ventures and used that money to buy more real estate and eventually pay off the real estate I had bought until I reached a point of passive income where I could officially quit my job. Now, I make about $15,000 per month passively from those real estate investments using a system that I call the well that never runs dry. If you want some help doing exactly what I did in becoming financially free while you're still young, click the link in the description to book a quick call and we can talk about the best way for you to achieve it. I have very limited availability, so please only book a call if you're serious about doing the work required to become financially free. In her pivotal book on overcoming fear, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, Susan Jeffers says, the only way to get rid of the fear of doing something is to go out and do it. One of the big steps in my transformation and journey of self-improvement came in the form of conquering my fears. I realized I was a very fearful person. Instead of facing my fears when I was younger, I avoided them, and as a result, they grew and took over more and more of my life. I was afraid to go on airplanes. I was afraid of roller coasters. I was afraid to talk to women or be in a large social setting. My fear and anxiety grew and grew until they hit a tipping point when I had an over two week long panic attack which made me realize that I needed to finally stop avoiding life and face it head on. I remember one day having this feeling like I couldn't get a deep enough breath. I started coughing and I panicked thinking I wasn't getting enough air. Instead of this feeling going away, it seemed to get worse and nothing I did would shake it. I saw doctors and they said everything was fine physically with me but I knew something was wrong. I would spend days just trying to avoid everyone and make it into the evening where I could sit in a bathtub and pass time until I could go to sleep and be at peace. I legitimately thought my life was over. I could not function for over two weeks despite everything I tried. Finally, I found someone on the internet talking about panic attacks and he said instead of trying to avoid them and distract yourself, make yourself fully feel the panic and in fact turn the dial on the fear up to an 11. I figured I had nothing to lose by trying it, so I did. And believe it or not, I was almost instantly cured. Apparently, when you let yourself feel the feelings of fear and you try to make them even more intense, you reach the limit of the intensity of those feelings and you realize that it can't go any higher. It's actually not so bad. That breaks the cycle and the fear goes away. The next week, I was on a plane trying the same technique to get over the fear and it worked perfectly. I flew to Tampa and went to an amusement park, Bush Gardens, known for having some crazy roller coasters. I rode every single ride. My greatest fear of all was talking to women, but I was able to conquer that one as well. I got really good at going up to women wherever I saw them 
and starting a conversation. I end up going from socially awkward to literally going out to Vegas and teaching other guys how to pick up women. All of this transformation happened because I decided to conquer my fears instead of letting them conquer me. Remember, you can't control fear. Fear is an emotion that is outside of your control, but what you can always choose to do in any moment is have courage. And the more you exercise it, the stronger it will get. No true transformation can occur unless you can change your mindset. Without changing your mindset, all changes are temporary and you will revert to your former habits and form. Bulldog mindset is a result of the mindset change I had in my 30s, which enabled all the other transformations to occur. The biggest mindset change I made was getting rid of the victim mindset. I always thought about what other people were doing to me or how life was unfair. I began to realize that even though life might not be fair, as a man, my life was my responsibility and no one else's. I decided to abandon the victim mindset and I traded it for what I call the bulldog mindset. The mindset of taking ownership of your own life and everything in it. Another huge mindset shift was how I let people treat me and my expectations for others. I was often disappointed in people because I put my expectations on them instead of just letting them do what they were going to do and then acting accordingly. I spent so much mental and emotional effort trying to control people in situations until I finally let go. I traded my expectations for standards. Expectations are burdens you put on other people. Standards are what you hold for yourself. I stopped letting people guilt me or make me feel bad, and I stopped doing anything out of obligation. I would only do something if I really wanted to do it, and if that upset some people, then it was their issue and not mine. The reason why you have dead marriages, the reason why your girlfriend or wife doesn't wanna have sex with you is because you're doing things out of obligation. You're not standing on your own. You're doing things not because you want to do them, but because you're supposed to do them. Instead of arguing and trying to force people to show me respect, if they didn't, they just weren't in my life, period. If I could summarize how I transformed and greatly improved myself in my 30s, here's what I would say. First, I utilized physical discipline to shape my mind and develop the mental toughness to do all the other things really necessary to transform myself. Next, I leaned on the wisdom of others through reading books and learning to grow and expand my capabilities and my ability to think for myself through exposure to new ideas. I developed a system to be productive and applied the productivity to working for myself instead of wasting time watching TV, playing video games, or making someone else rich. As part of the path of personal development, I faced my fears, especially around women, and through facing those fears, I was able to develop an inner confidence that transformed how I presented myself to the world. Finally, I changed my mindset. I challenged my previous beliefs and took full ownership and responsibility for my life. I applied stoic philosophy to all areas of my life and I stepped up as a man instead of shirking responsibility and blaming society or women for my problems. If you're wondering if you can improve in your 30s, I hope this video has answered that question. And if you're struggling with the financial part of your life, click the link in the description and let's talk. If you want to transform yourself and improve your life in your 30s, make sure you watch the three insecurities all men face next. You can watch it right here after this video. If you don't conquer these three insecurities, you'll never feel like a man. Believe me, I know.